Viscocanalostomy, developed by Professor Robert Stegman of South Africa, controls glaucoma by having the aqueous humor bypass the trabecular meshwork through a newly created permeable window in Decimase membrane. Once through the window, the aqueous flows into a reservoir made by excising a block of sclera and into newly created ostea and Schlem's canal and onto the normal collector channels. Much has been made of the difficulty, learning curve, reproducibility, and duration of this surgical procedure. Progress in ophthalmology has often required re-examining anatomic details and using special instrumentation. If meticulous attention is paid to the following 12 steps, viscocanalostomy should be well within the scope of the general ophthalmologist. Step 1. Working at high power is critical. We are used to working between 8 to 10 times magnification. Most of this procedure should be performed at 20 to 25 times magnification. It is said that we are limited by what we can see, but more correctly, by what we cannot see. Step 2. When planning the superficial flap incision, choose a site in unoperated tissue between two collector channels, which are seen exiting the sclera, usually surrounded by pigmentation. Lightly overlay a parabolic marker to make sure the flap fits. Step 3. The superficial flap should be 200 to 250 microns thick. If it is too thick, it causes the underlying scleral reservoir to be too shallow, leading to fibrosis. If it is too thin, it shreds on closure, leading to bleb formation. This can also happen if the flap is uneven. To assure a good superficial flap, use the parabolic marker and cut slightly deeper than the needed depth. Start at the apex, judge 200 to 250 microns, and use a grease hopper mini diamond knife. Then switch to the grease hopper mini spoon blade. Bevel down, hands low, and don't tint up the leading edge of the flap. Step four. The deep block is where most surgeons have trouble because they are not used to dissecting this part of the anatomy. Construct it one half millimeter inside of the superficial flap. The cuts must be deep, down until the gray of the ciliary body shows. The tendency is to be too superficial, which will lead to difficulty in identifying Schlem's canal. Don't worry if you go through the sclera, exposing the ciliary body. The following is probably the most important step in the procedure. At the apex, cut right down to the ciliary body until you can actually see it. Then back up a few fibers and start the deep block dissection with the grease hopper mini diamond blade. You should be able to see the blue-gray color of the ciliary body glistening through the thin scleral mesh. Switch to the grease hopper mini spoon blade. Bevel down, hands low, and don't tint up the leading edge of the block. Step five, you are now on the right plane to directly enter Schlem's canal. Stay in this plane. You should see the glistening of the ciliary body through the scleral mesh. Precise fashioning of the deep block is required. If you are not deep enough, you will go over the canal, requiring you to restart in a new plane, resulting in shredded tissue and loss of vital landmarks. Proximal to Schlem's canal, there is a subtle change in the scleral fibers from a crossing pattern to a tangential pattern with an increased opacity. As you enter the canal, the floor of your dissection suddenly becomes dark and shiny. The trabecular meshwork on the inner side of Schlem's canal is seen. Step six, developing Decimase window is the most vulnerable part of the surgery. Here you are creating the trabecular meshwork bypass. Once Schlem's canal is identified, the sides of the deep block are extended forward with the grease hopper mini spoon blade. Hold the blade with the flat side outward and use feather-like forward strokes with little or no downward pressure, cutting one or two fibers at a time. Extend the sides about three quarters of a millimeter past the trabecular meshwork. When the block is excised, part of Decimase window on the trabecular meshwork should be left exposed to prevent the sclera from sealing closed over the trabecular meshwork. If the dissection goes too far into the cornea, there is an increased chance of breaking the window, dehiscence, or collapse of the superficial flap. Perforations lead to increased fibrosis and iris plugs. Step seven, a paracentesis to profoundly shallow the anterior chamber is absolutely necessary prior to cannulating Schlem's canal and detaching Schwabe's line to decrease chances of breaking into the anterior chamber during these next two steps. Step eight, cannulating Schlem's canal is actually one of the easier steps in the procedure. After the paracentesis, blood is frequently seen coming out of the ostea of Schlem's canal 
because the episclerovenous venous pressure is now higher than the interocular pressure regurgitating blood into the canal. The ostia are easily identified. The trabecular meshwork is seen as a band of beige shiny tissue between the blue-gray sclera and the clear decimase membrane. Frequently, the trabecular meshwork has pigment spots on it. The junction of this band and the sidewalls of the deep block dissection are the location of the ostia. Lay the grease harbor viscocanalostomy cannula gently on the trabecular meshwork and advance it toward the sidewall of the deep block to lead you right to the ostium. If you hold the cannula just at the ostium and don't enter the canal and merely squirt BSS toward the ostium, frequently you will see some of the adjacent episcleral vessels blanch. Three puffs of viscoelastic directed at the ostium will dilate it, allowing easy entry. If you meet resistance, stop. You are in the wrong place. Do not go deeper than one millimeter into the canal. Remember, the canal is curved and you are oarlocked. Follow the curve. Step nine. When detaching Decimase membrane from Schwabe's line, hold a dry Wexel sponge against Decimase membrane and gently lift up on the deep block flap to limit its excursion and prevent rupturing the window. This may happen if the flap is held and the sponge is pushed against Decimase membrane. Step 10. A benefit of viscocanalostomy is that there is usually no bleb formation nor bleb problems. A tight closure is mandatory to prevent bleb formation. Mersaline sutures are used because they do not stretch. Place the suture through the flap over the underlying ledge and bring it out at the deep edge of the flap to prevent suture tract leakage. Inject the viscoelastic under the sutured flap until it is convex. If it leaks between the sutures, Add more sutures until there is no leakage. Do not overfill or you may detach Decimase membrane at the central margin. Watch this area as you place the viscoelastic under the flap. Step 11. Peripheral anterior synechia and iris plugs are a source of failure if there are micro or macro perforations. Installation of myocol at the end of surgery prevents synechia and plugs for the short term. If there is a perforation, Use the combination of pilocarpine to constrict the pupil and phenylephrine to make the iris diaphragm taut postoperatively four times a day for a month. If there is a frank rupture of the window, a peripheral iridectomy should be performed. A non-plugged viscocanalostomy is still a very effective procedure, even with perforations. Step 12. Fibrosis of the ostia of Schlem's canal is a major cause of failures of viscocanalostomies. All tissue tags should be trimmed to prevent physical blockage and a matrix for fibrosis. Injection of sodium hyaluronate and Schlem's canal in the reservoir prevent their collapse and fibrosis. Myotic and epinephrine medications vascularize tissue and should be stopped six to eight weeks before a viscocanalostomy with interim steroidal treatment to quiet the eye. Generous use of steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories postoperatively helps to prevent fibrosis. Now. What else can you do to promote your success in viscocanalostomies? Do not change a step in the procedure. Obtain and review Professor Stegman's videos on viscocanalostomy. Attend a hands-on lab dissection. Review viscocanalostomy technique lecture notes. Review your own surgical videos. And visit a surgeon doing the procedure. Oh yes, and most importantly, Cut all the way down to the ciliary body at the apex of the deep block to start your dissection in the right plane. Now, what did I just say? Repeat after me. Cut down to the ciliary body at the apex of the deep block. Now you have it. You're on your way to sleeping better on glaucoma surgical nights. Hell, now even I can learn to do a viscocanalostomy. I'll be looking for something new to do soon. Thank <laughs> you.